Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into exactly how to get into that register. Okay. It's actually a little bit simpler than you might think. And the way that I do it is I start off, first of all, warming up. Always warm up. You don't really want to get into that sound without warming up. But it's, it's very small. It's very light. That's the first thing that I would say about that particular sound. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a lip bubble. So I'm going to start off generally for me around a G. I'm just going to go like this. Just go up sequentially in chromatics. And I'm going to go all the way up through my upper range up into the soprano, um, either F or F sharp, generally speaking, with that thing. Um, I can't seem to get any higher with that. But that's where I'm going to go up to. Okay? Um, then I'm going to do some octave slides, same thing. And, uh, you know, the second thing I want to add on to that, I go all the way back down as low as my register can go. So all the, all the way down to the vocal fry. Okay? And then I go back all the way up. Same thing, and I'm going to do it with vocal slides. So just the... Okay, I'm going to try to do that higher, you know. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. I'm a little bit flat there. That's usually about where I go to, okay? And I'm just going to do the lip bubbles like that. Um, then what I'm going to do, after I do a lot of that, is I'm going to start doing what I call space axle, okay? Now, there's a lot of vocal coaches out there they're going to tell you that this is unhealthy to do in the voice, okay? And I'm just going to tell you that they're wrong. They're playing wrong. You're going to build up the upper register first rather than building up the chest register. You're going to go back to the chest register after you have the upper register built. And there's a lot of vocal coaches that will tell you that that's wrong. And like I said, I don't care. They don't know what they're talking about because that's not going to get you into it. If you start out low, trying to do this lower stuff, even if you're working the middle voice, even if you're working the, the middle voice, which is the, the mask, you know, Nah, nah. You're gonna get trapped in the chest voice there a little bit, and you can still sing through it. But when you start getting up to high Bs, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit too heavy for you to get into it. Um, now I can do it because I've had a lot of training, but it's going to make it really tough to get into. And so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top end of our falsetto range, which is the high C. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll start out lower, but I like to start with the high C. This seems to work. And it's just a yeah, ah, okay? So it's yeah, okay? Now I want you to do yeah, as in you're saying yeah, but then you're going to go yeah, up a third, that was flat. Yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, it's not, it's not loud. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a little bit, but you're not, you're not pushing with volume. You're actually giving it probably maybe like 70%, but it's very small, it's very thin. Yeah! 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 Okay. Yeah! That's about the top end of my range. Then you're gonna go back down. Yeah! Wait. Yeah! Pull back on volume now. Okay, here's the B. Yeah! 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 And it's, it's gonna start to run out right there. Yeah! 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 And you can go real nasal on that. Yeah! Okay, and that's you're gonna start to get into it. Then you're gonna come back with that same lightness and go through the chest voice. Okay, and you go. So, Start taking it back slightly. Here I took it back. No, I'm basically in the head voice right there in the high A. Head voice. Falsetto head voice. And 
and I'm all the way through. Now, why was I able to get all the way through doing it that way, as opposed to doing it the way that all these opera singers teach you? Well, the first thing is that I started out with a very, very light sound at the top. I got everything into a head voice. I'm not tra allowing myself to get trapped in the chest voice. If I was teaching you to sing like Kurt Cobain, I would start you in the bottom note because he's a very, very deep and heavy sound. You know, it's it's a, uh, this is out of my range, this is out of my range. He's really, really heavy on a lot of stuff. He's screaming the entire time. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty rough with the way that he sings. Um, I don't know, it's a, uh, I think it's a, Hey's the one who likes all our pretty song. That's not what it is. We're not trying to get the chest voice heavy. It'd be more like, Hey's the one who likes all our pretty songs. Songs, 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 songs. Okay? It's lighter. Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Yeah! Okay? You can still add a little bit of the grid in there but you're not pushing with volume. You start pushing with volume, you're never going to get through to the upper register. And you know, everybody's like, well, Chris Cornell, I mean, he pushed his voice hard, but he lost, lost his voice live um, on numerous occasions, couldn't do it live most of the time. It's, it's almost not possible to sing in that register like that. You have to end up pulling back on volume, kind of like Jeff Tate would do, and really just add a lot of glottal compression, which is really, really hard on the voice. And so I don't really rec recommend that. If you want to sing, in the upper register, the way that you're going to do it is you're going to pull back on the heaviness of the chest voice and bring in and develop the head voice. That's how you truly get into it. That's how you get into the upper register power metal type singing. They're not pushing their voice hard, and they're not covering the sound as well. Chris used to would, would cover the sound. He would cover it. They're very, very small. They're very, very thin. Um, and I would say probably a good example of somebody who's able to get somewhere in between all that is Miles Kennedy. You know, Miles tends to kind of do this this thing like uh I don't know what the notes are but um let's yeah uh, yeah I want to rise today and change this world okay it's a lot of glottal compression it's way harder than he sings um but it's it's a little bit different and then when he gets to the upper register he's in the falsetto yeah but he's he's glottally compressed. Yeah, yeah, hey! And he's kind of in between all that. He's still heavy, um, in the sense that he's glottally compressed, but he's not. He's not trying to bring the chest voice into it. He still keeps it in the head voice. Chris tends to keep it. He goes into the chest voice, and that can be really heavy on the voice. So. shit like that. I can't even do it in the upper register there. Then I only love you. Then I, I only love you when I'm gone. Okay? It's not easy to sing, but that's that's where he is. And um, he flips really, really hard in that chest, into that chest voice up there. Then I, okay? Lots of screaming, lots of upper register scream. But the, the, the um, power metal way, no, no, it's almost like you're speaking it. You're not trying to get into it too hard. It's but it's an ah. So yeah, yeah. Think of like space axle. So space. Uh ah, you know where you are. You're in the jungle. Okay. You get that space in the back. Soft palate up. Larynx down. Tongue. Ah. See where that is? And it'll sound pretty good. It'll sound really open. It'll sound pretty big. Um, and then you slightly can take it back. So if you want to get it bigger. You can go, yeah, yeah, hey, hey, but you still got to keep it speaking. You still got to keep it light. You start getting too heavy with it, too much chest voice. You're going to, you're never going to get to it. Like, listen to this. So like, if I try and do all chest voice for the high C, this is where Chris destroyed his voice. He's. You know, it's it's it, it actually hurts. I don't don't really want to do it, but I'm gonna demonstrate it to you guys just for a second here. Well, I've been watching. You're gonna kill yourself with that. Okay, let's see it. Um. Well, I've been watching. Well, you be gone then. You're gonna to want to get into something more along the lines of that, a little bit lighter. And uh. But I won't preach to you. What is a gushing? You 
get it lighter and still keep it in the mask, and you're going to be able to pull it off. You get too heavy with it, too much chest voice, it's you're going to get killed. You're just going to get killed. And um, anyways, so that's my video on how to sing crazy-ass power metal type stuff. You guys enjoyed that, and if you guys really enjoyed this, um, head on over to my website. It's uh, songrocker.net, and um, go ahead and buy my product, The Elements of Singing, and uh, we'll go from there. If you want to take a Skype lesson from me, if you want to study with me, hit me up. Um, we can do a Skype lesson, and I'll go through all the different things that are going on with your voice. And it, let me just add into this, because I have a very high voice. Okay, my voice is my voice is not down here. It's not. That's not where I speak from. It's high. It's small. I'm 5'7". I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I have a very, very small voice. I have a very, very high registered voice. And so not every person is going to be able to sing in the register that I sing in. But one thing that I can guarantee you is that I can get your tone right. So if you have a deeper voice than, than say, myself or whoever, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to sing in this register. It just means that your register is going to be deeper. And so we have to learn to work with your voice, and we have to learn to understand what your voice does, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of people out there, I know there's going to be a lot of them, and they're going to want to imitate the way that I sing in the upper register or the way that I sing in general. Don't do that. I've got a nasal, small, very, very whiny voice. That's just the way that my voice sounds, okay? If you've got a voice that's down here, you know, it doesn't mean you won't be able to sing in the upper register. Let me show you. I mean, I can even take it from this. Yeah! Hey! Hey! It's, it's just a lot of glottal compression. Yeah! Wherever your voice is resonating, you can still do it wherever your voice is going to resonate. And of course, you know, my throat's just small, so I've been able to do that a little bit easier than a lot of people. But um, it's, it's definitely possible. And I think more than anything, you know, singing, you, you have to have money notes. Think of it in terms of what's the money note, man? What's the note that people want to hear that they're going to pay? They're going to throw down their hard earned cash. To listen to they're gonna go to the concert they're gonna buy your t-shirts they're gonna buy your albums hopefully they're still selling <laughs> not too much anymore but you get it what's the money notes that you can hit what's the notes that you can use to contrast those money notes and make those money notes more important and how can you make those those notes that aren't the money notes interesting you know I think that a guy that did that very well was Lane Staley back in the 90s did a very very good job of, of hitting these these money notes you know man of the box obviously a really incredible note very, very chesty. Very, very chesty. And that's fine if you want to sing that way. It's a very, very heavy sound. Um, he later thinned it out a little bit more toward, towards where I'm going with it, where I'm trying to teach you. But it was a much thinner sound um, towards the end than it was on facelift. But that's fine. If you want to sing that way, we can we can always change it up later. You know, if it's a money note that's going to make you money, it's going to get your band big, then that's what I would rather hear rather than doing something that's safe. And I know that I'm probably the only vocal coach out there that's going to say that because I understand how competitive it is. And I understand that there's certain notes that just need to be sung in hard rock and heavy, heavy metal and whatever. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think. Another guy that was very good um, at kind of hitting these money notes, and especially his own way, he's not really... And this might come off to some people as, as a, little bit, a little bit disrespectful, but he is not necessarily a trained singer in the sense of the way that I was trained, but Maynard is a very good singer. But he sings much smaller. He's got such a unique way of hitting all the notes and the rhythms he would get into, the way that he would do it. It was very cool. But he'd kind of do these screams where it's kind of like, uh, like I don't even know, just, yeah! And, he, it, and, you know, they're not always high notes. He can do them high. Yeah! You know, he can do them high. But that's not normally what he was doing. He was normally just doing them pretty low. And um, he'd kind of have this long scream, this long grunt, and you'd put you'd put some effects on it. You'd put probably a bit, obviously an echo on there, probably some reverb on there, a little bit of chorus maybe, and you'd get a really really cool sound. And um, a lot of that goes into the studio with how you're going to hit these money notes. Dave Matthews, not the greatest singer in the world, but my God, is, is some of his songs incredible? And some of the notes that he hits, they just send chills in my spine. And I listen to him like that was just a you know a middle middle E right there. Something, or I guess it would be a high E in, in his in his case. You know, I guess it was how he did it on the piano. But I look at it as a middle voice E, and um, he's just singing that note. And it's 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 ringing. You know, he's hitting it. It's ringing. He's got all these effects on it that make it sound amazing. I saw him live, Dave Matthews, and um, it was Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds. It was pretty cool. And uh, he goes up to the microphone. The first thing that he does, he just goes. Yeah, you know, he's kind of he does this this voice that he does, and I can't do it like him because my voice is nothing like his. 
But he does the note that he normally does, and it just echoes and rings, and I'm just like, my God, there's something to that. And so that's more than anything what you want to be thinking about, okay? Not everybody is going to be able to do this. Not everybody has this kind of a register. But I can guarantee you that I can get you into it to where it's it's there's something going on there, and then maybe a couple of years down the road you'll be able to sing it. So it does take a lot of strength. It does take a lot of training. And eventually, eventually after a lot of practice, a lot of training, um, we'll be able to we'll see what we can do. If you're a baritone, ah, there's a few baritones I know. Ken Tamplin, obviously, he says that he's a baritone. He's not a baritone. Sorry, sorry, Ken, you're a, you're a tenor. <laughs> You're a tenor. There's baritones. Can't, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Most. Uh, anyways, we'll check. We'll come, um, come over and check out my website. Okay, it's the last thing I'm gonna say. Let me just click off this fucking thing. And uh, yeah, over and out. Songrocker.net. Boom.